Hello people, I am Javi Kawai, joined by Gene Lau, and we're going to look at Game of Thrones Nudity Explained Stand-Up Comedy by Saurabh Pant. Pant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Saurabh. I know you're watching and you're like, why did he... Why does he even try to say my name? I'm so sorry. I'll get it right someday. But for now, I've got it wrong. <laughs> But why, why long does she get all stand behind, man? And it's, uh, it's, um, like, it, it's basically been turned into this amazing TV series. Okay, how many people here love Game of Thrones? How many people love Game of Thrones? Yeah? Yeah? Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones fans love it, love it. Ooh. How many people have never watched it or don't like it? How many people? Yeah? No, that's okay. Oh, there's that's a lot of people who haven't seen it. That's okay. <laughs> Don't let the world judge you. It is funny. Dude, I love Game of Thrones, but like people are like, you have not seen Game of Thrones. Oh my god! You have not seen Game of Thrones. Oh my god! That's true. That's true. When did you get diagnosed? Oh my god! You have a piece of the liver or something. You have the colony and the eyelids. Oh my god! <laughs> so big deal to watch Game of Thrones, man. I, I tried to make one of my relatives watch Game of Thrones, right? I tried my level best, and 10 minutes they're like, he can. <laughs> but the thing is, if you've read Game of Thrones, you never see Game of Thrones. You say, I've read the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Give me credit for the Song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> and the thing is, if you've read the novels, right? The whole purpose of reading, let's be honest. Is so when the TV show, the movie comes out, you can tell me like, oh, I don't care. I have confidence. George R. R. Martin fucked all of us over because he's created a separate plot for the books and the TV show. So we got undermined. My wife was watching Game of Thrones. I read about the four, first four books of uh, of A Song of Ice and Fire, and she's like, you know what? I think Jon Snow is going to die. I'm like, tension with me. <laughs> I'm here though, you don't worry. And then he died. And my wife was unaffected because that's not the first time that I've disappointed her. <laughs> Just saying. Um, but Game of Thrones is amazing, man. My, my favorite, uh, John Snow, though, he keeps dying every day. Like, he wakes up in the morning. I think he thinks death is sleep. He's like, how many hours did you die yesterday? Eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I find about, about the TV show, which I, I don't think people understand, I don't think people understand the purpose of the nudity in Game of Thrones, right? People, there's a lot of nudity in it, right? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Everyone knows. <laughs> but I finally figured out why it was. It was basically there's such dark shit that happens in Game of Thrones, and then you see something nice and it makes it okay. <laughs> Like a one thing, like, oh no, next time, time! Oops. And that was my favorite part of Game of Thrones, man. Every, they just kept throwing breasts all the time. They kept throwing breasts in the first couple. See, every five seconds of the breast, is very happy in life. <laughs> the thing is, everyone, everyone wants to see women's breasts because they're amazing. They are amazing. They're, it doesn't matter what they, they, they could be big, small. <laughs> Saggy, have nerves on them. You show them like, thank you. I'm the God ka kaam kar This is God's work. Everyone wants to see women's breasts. Well, men, women, babies, everyone. It's one of a woman could come out instead of nipples, she could have Nicholas mustache on either side. <laughs> With a tattoo saying Nazi on top, every man is like, I'm Donald Trump. <laughs> I want to see both sides of that story. <laughs> we were fine. <laughs> Press are amazing. And again, I'm not trying to be a boy. It's just, they're, they're beautiful. They're nice, right? The thing is that, in a weird twist of equality, what Game of Thrones started doing in consequence seasons was that they started showing the men's the thing is, nobody wants to see it. <laughs> nobody! <laughs> Straight women, gay men, nobody has ever. Men should be like, I'm not going to eat it! Involves it going inside because you can't see it because of the beef beef. She's saying go deeper because she's like, and then I'm needing it again. 
Deeper, deeper, I don't want to see it. <laughs> but again, what Game of Thrones did right was that uh, for the longest time, whenever we see uh, those areas of men in, 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 in movie format or video format, it's always these, oh, like, oh my god. <laughs> This guy just walking around saying, ha, ah, only in my ceiling, yes, no. <laughs> See my only ceiling, you want return ticket, let's just yes. Game of Thrones is trying to show normal ones. And as men, you feel good. Normal ones? Because you see that. Normal penises. You too, where is that? You too, where is that? If you're not seeing Game of Thrones, here's the biggest endorsement to watch Game of Thrones. Okay, what you don't understand is the nudity is part of the symbolism of Game of Thrones. Because what happens is that every episode of Game of Thrones is the following: they show some deaths, then some crazy shit happens, which you don't understand. <laughs> then they show dicks, and then death. <laughs> that is the best synopsis of life. <laughs> You start off with some breasts, then some weird shit happens that you don't understand. You have to deal with a bunch of dicks, you die. Game of Thrones is like... That was great. Mm -hmm. That was that was unexpectedly great. He caught me off guard a couple of times. The thing that, that really made me laugh hard was when he goes, Ned Stark died. Boobs! And <laughs> his face was perfect. Boobs. <laughs> His face was so awesome. I didn't never, I never considered like the balancing act of like crushing your soul with something messed up in the show and then, oh, boobs, and you're like happy again like a dumb kid. <laughs> Almost like those dogs in Up, like Squirrel, like you just completely abandon all previous notion and just go for the thing. You're a big Game of Thrones fan, yeah. I am actually, yeah. and I come to think of it, I don't think I've. Are there scenes where they showed the guy's yes. area? Yeah, they did. I, really? I'm pretty sure. Well, what when he said that, that's not what like my brain remembers because Game of Thrones has a lot of like, you know, intimate scenes mm. to put it lightly. And there was one that happened with two dudes, and my brain got oh, yeah. really confused because I was like, wait, who am I supposed to be looking at? <laughs> I really? Like, oh, I forgot about the scene. I, I, it's like when it happened, I was. Because usually, I think as all guys, we're, 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 we've trained ourselves to just block out the guy when there's a sex scene and we're looking at the girl. You know, you're looking at her parts and then her her response, how she's being stimulated. You don't really give a shit about the dude. But when it's two dudes, your your brain just like goes haywire and you're like, wait, what? And I, okay, I'll just wait for this to be over. <laughs> that's Like, that's literally what happened because I just got confused. I'm like, because one of them looked slightly effeminate like right and so i thought that okay. was the chick for a second but it wasn't it was just a dude it was like uh. and uh yeah that i don't remember seeing any um male areas but i do recall seeing lots of boobs and uh boobs. and things and butts and stuff but i'm sure if i went back and watched it i'd, I'd find all kinds of you know male areas but uh, maybe i blocked it out for good reason i agree with what he's saying at the, at the top anyway when he goes you know if you haven't seen it you're fine because some people do lose their mind. Like, I was late to the Game of Thrones train, or the the fad, whatever you want to call it. Like, I was late to get on board. I was late to get on board with a lot of things, though. Like, Harry Potter, I was really late with Harry Potter. It wasn't until a movie seven was about to come out that I finally started reading the books. Wow. So I was really late to that club. With Game of Thrones, it wasn't until The Red Wedding that I started watching the show because everyone lost their shit on Facebook. They're like, what the hell, WTF, Game of Thrones, and blah, blah, blah. And I turned to my friend, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, this is why I told you to watch the show, man. You, you have to watch. I'm like, fucking. You started with the Red Wedding? You didn't start from the episode I, I didn't one? start with the Red Wedding. I started when the Red Wedding aired. That's okay. when I went back and started watching the show. Okay, I was like, why did you jump in the middle of it? Yeah, oh my God. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. I, I started from the beginning like everybody else, but like I didn't start watching until The Red Wedding aired, and I was like, all right, I guess I should start watching this. And then The Red Wedding happened, and I was just like, this is a really depressing show. I don't know why everybody's so into this. I mean, I was still watching, and I was still into it, but like I hesitate to like say this, but like there was there were times where I was ready to give up on the show. It was getting to the point where I didn't feel like there were any redeeming characters left except for Tyrion. Okay. Obviously, you still have, right. you know, good characters that you're following, but like none of them were as compelling for me as 
Tyrion Lannister, and maybe Jon Snow. When I thought Tyrion was going to die because of, of that fight for his freedom, mm -hmm. you remember that when he was in handcuffs? Oh, yeah. I told myself, like, if he died, I was done with the show. There was no way I was going to continue without Tyrion Lannister. And thankfully, he's made it to, you know, what will be the final season, at the very least. Like, at this point, if he dies in the final season, fine. Like, it's, it's the final season. Like, now I'm too invested to not carry through to the end. But... At that time, I was ready to stop just because of that. But it's, you know, it's still really good writing and very intriguing. So if you haven't watched it, I would definitely say to watch it. But don't feel bad if you haven't. I tried reading the books and I got through, and I tell everyone, this is like the same story, uh, I, it's the same thing I've said over and over again. I was reading it on Kindle and I got 30% in and I had to stop because I was getting tired of the long descriptions of food. Because it's such a thick book, what took right. me, you know, to get to 30% of that book, I, I would have finished eight other books in that time. I read, I would have read two wow. Harry Potter books in that time because it took, it just, it was a lot. You know, it's right. it's very, it's very dense. And I've been told that the first book is hard to get through, but once you get past it, the other books are more fun and you, you can't put it down. But I'm like, what? That should not be a requisite. It shouldn't be a prerequisite to read something boring to get mm -hmm. to something interesting. Like, it should be interesting from the get-go. Apparently in the books, there's like a complete different realm or world they haven't even touched. Like, the, I think it's like the Far East or something where all the Asians are. And I'm like, why are they not shown on Game of Thrones? Because f*** Asians, that's why. <laughs> It's really upsetting. I, you, it's you telling me that is just like I'm just gonna block that out of my memory now because that's just gonna make me mad for no reason. Like I have, there's no re there's no need for me to get mad about that. Like who can can't do anything about it. I'll just bring Asians onto my YouTube channel and hope that makes some kind of a difference. There's a possibility now with like crazy rich Asians and, and you know seeing Chinese influence in movies and whatnot. I'm pretty sure you're gonna see a spinoff. There that, is a spinoff. That, 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 well, that's gonna include. Oh, I hope. You know, I'm pretty sure you, you, That'd you, be cool. you know, Asian Americans are going to get a lot more phone calls to audition for stuff, but more than likely, not in the States. It's all going to be in England because Americans mm. can't act, apparently. It's got to be, except for Tyrion Lannister. That's why two of the leads in Star Wars are English. Yes, good point. Yeah, that's just how it is now. Superman, the all American superhero, is played by a Brit. Oh, yeah. You know, it's the way of the world, you know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, and I very much enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Saurabh Pant. Pant, I am hoping you will DM me on Twitter and tell me how to say your name properly, or I will get lots of comments below this video telling me how egregious it was that I mispronounced his name. Anyway, I very much appreciate you allowing us to react to this. Your stuff is awesome, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of it. And uh, yes, and so is Gene Loud. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, and short films, and check out Gene Lau on the social media. I'm Jabby Kuei. This is... Gene Lau. Peace out. I was going to point down for those of you who were wondering, and I was like, nope, that's not... Yeah. Bye-bye. Peace out. Again. <laughs>